Kino der Tote. A classic, right? Within the Call of Duty community, Kino der Toten may be the most cherished and beloved zombie map of all time. like almost everyone had their first zombies experience right here. As the game launch title, this was the map which introduced millions to the zombie genre and as a result, really is the reason I can talk about it and almost every gamer knows what I'm talking about. To many, it's simply the theater map or the one with the thunder gun or oh yeah, that one. And seeing as it's held in such high regard by the community, it must be an amazing map. Right? Well, actually, no. Oh, now this ought to be a good time. It just, it just blew them all over the place. Wow. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Zombies Retrospective, a weekly series in which I crush your childhood harder than season eight crushed the Game of Thrones fandom. We're jumping straight in it today with Black Ops 1's Kino der Toten. But if you want to go back through World at War first, there is a playlist you can follow down in the description. Anyways, let's just get straight into this one. So I understand this is going to be a really tough sell. I'm about to explain to you the viewer, and really an entire fandom, why the opinion that Kino der Toten is a good map is wrong. Now, in order to explain why Kino is objectively bad, or at least overrated, we need to define what makes a good zombies map. Through World at War, we looked at a few main things that really contributed to the creation of zombies. Gameplay innovation, and storyline. Gameplay includes things like atmosphere and replayability, but is most importantly just your subjective experience with the game. Gameplay is really at the core of every video game. It's the most important thing, and if the gameplay isn't strong, the game overall won't be good. Innovation obviously looks at ways the map brings freshness to the game, not always with features, but usually. And lastly, the storyline looks at characters, lore, and Easter eggs. These three pillars make up the near sacred triad of what makes zombies, zombies. So first, let's start with gameplay. Kino der Toten definitely shines in this area and is the main reason as to why people tend to like it. Kino is a tight, simple, and straightforward map that really anybody can play. If I had to describe Kino der Toten in one word, I would say it's palatable. It's simple good and really has nothing which will turn off a new player. You start in a simple spawn room with limited weapons and have the choice to move two ways, which ultimately both lead to power. While movable, unlike previous maps, the box does not spawn in a set location this time, but rather can be found in any spot besides spawn. While home to Mule Kick now, the original launch of the map saw our four main perks return, scattered throughout the map. And last but not least, players see the return of Pack-a-Punch. Kino der Toten is straightforward to a T. You get all the things that you need, and then just try to get as far as you can. And while to some more advanced players it may be perceived to be too easy, I think it sits as a good basic map. It's great for beginners, and if experienced players want more of a challenge, they can set their own constraints on their gameplay. This is why things like the Pack-a-Punch challenge and things are so popular on Kino. So sure, it can be a little bit dry to play over and over, but Kino is a tight experience. So while core gameplay itself is solid, the first glaring issue that comes with Kino is the atmosphere. Kino der Toten really fails to strike a distinct tone and ends up coming off as dull. In fact, that may be the tone the map is going for. Kino is an abandoned theater. Everything is run down and dirty. While on one side, it brings us to a more personal location that once knew happiness, it often only lands as uninteresting and plain. 
While each room is theoretically unique, most of them feel cold, gray, and eventually they all start to just blend together. It's only in the stage and alley where we see a truly unique and engrossing setting. The alleyway was the first bright area to ever exist in zombies, and it's a very nice contrast with the gloomy interior. But the stage is by far the most redeeming area of Kino. Giant room with an interesting teleporter that commands the center of attention. It's, it's really a nice view. And so while the stage may be a truly iconic place of zombies history, the overall atmosphere of gloomy and dull fails to be truly interesting. Kino also suffers from lack of replayability. While fun at the time, this is a map which hasn't aged quite as well as Doris. First of all, the stage was designed with poor balance, and because of this, opening the small door next to the M16 makes training here extremely dangerous. This means that taking the alleyway on your opening route on Kino is inadvisable, and it forces the player to go the Mule Kick MP40 dressing room route almost every single day game. Furthermore, the Thunder Gun, ironically one of the coolest things about Kino, makes the map extremely easy. While I will speak about its innovativeness later, in many ways it actually hurts the replayability of the map. Whenever you become cornered, you just shoot and live. There are no consequences for four choices, as it's a get-out-of-jail-free type weapon. And even the guns feel generally un- interesting. There is something about them, but to this day, the guns of Black Ops 1 just feel like they weren't designed with zombies in mind. See, World at War had both bad and amazing guns. Black Ops 2 saw a more general rebalance of weapons, but Black Ops 1 weapons are boring. There are a few really great guns, and the rest is just a mountain of mediocrity, which is actually worse than having bad guns. See, there are no real hilarious lows, like getting the Springfield or the War Machine, and that takes away from the value of getting something good. You've got oddities like the G11, China Lake, and Ballistic Knife, which despite being cool is not worth the slot. The ammo count on almost every wall weapon is tiny, and because of this, you basically have to buy an MP40. Many of the box weapons are mediocre, and even upgrade, most of them are still unusable. The FAMAS, SPAS, HS10, PM63, AK74U are all really fun to use once upgraded, but they lack ammo, and this makes them infuriating choices. Furthermore, the snipers, shotguns, and SMGs in general are ineffective, especially in comparison to World at Wars. Even the LMGs feign in comparison. Considering a 30-year jump, a lot of the guns on Black Ops 1 just feel severely underpowered. Fortunately though, there are some weapons which redeem the game. Upgrading the Colts, Commando, Galil, Og, G11, Crossbow, Raygun, and Thundergun all provide the player with some exciting weaponry. Sadly though, there's not much more than that. You're basically stuck on using assault rifles or wonder weapons, whereas in previous and future games, the player is capable of using snipers, shotguns, and SMGs into the later rounds. Sadly, in Black Ops 1, the player is left with few unique weapon types. This severely undercuts Black Ops 1 as a whole, but seeing as Kino is already an extremely basic map, the flaw is much more glaring. Now, next we have one of the more weaker links of Kino der Toten, which is Storyline. From the moment you hit start game, it is obvious that this is a map with very little storyline development. While loading, the player is only given a short audio clip from Richthofen with a still image on the screen. Perhaps this station will hold the key to the real goals of Group 935. I still do not trust my unconventional allies, but they are of great use to me. But I digress. Who would have thought the MDT was capable of time travel? How many stations does this group have? Where did that little girl disappear to? Only time will tell what new questions await us in this theater of the damn. Okay, as the launch title of the game, this is something that has always disappointed me as the potential for a great introduction existed, but it was just never capitalized on. I mean, they had an intro for five 
but not Kino. On top of that, there is very little character development or progression throughout the entire map. It's just sort of a place. It's, it's a stopping point between Doris and Ascension that doesn't really matter. And the only thing we really get of interest or mystery are the rooms we briefly teleport to. Now, these give us access to video reels, which create a much needed intrigue, but still, they kind of leave the player desiring more. Seeing Samantha's room is very nice foreshadowing, and I have to give Kino points on that regard, as it is a very nice touch. And I mean, let's also not forget 115. Not only is it the greatest zombie song, it stands on its own as just an amazing metal song of the world. So while Kino does have a few interesting quirks, it really only feels like a step backwards from the storyline development of Doris. But lastly, let's talk about innovation. Kino der Toten is, without a doubt, the least original map to ever exist. Kino der Toten added nothing. Verut, perks. Shinonuma, characters. Doris, pack a punch. Kino der Toten, uh, shit. I actually went to the zombies wiki to see how they describe what Kino added, and this is all I could find. Kino der Toten introduces some new components to the zombie mode, including crawler zombies, the fire pit trap, and the thunder gun a new wonder weapon. That, <laughs> that's it. And I know exactly what you're thinking. The Thunder Gun is cool. It's one of the most iconic wonder weapons in zombies history. And to that, I, I actually agree with you. But guess what? I think I might be about to blow some of your minds here, so bear with me. The Thunder Gun was actually intended to be used on five. Oh my God! It appears the Pentagon has been breached. We are under attack by legions of the undead. Zombies. Yeah. Little known fact, but if you don't believe me, just listen to these audio clips. Time for Operation Thunderbolt. This will blow those marble eyes right out of their heads. Torn asunder! This weapon could make a weaker man lazy. I could get used to this. So these are quotes from Robert McNamara on the map five, talking about, you guessed it, the Thunder Gun. See, originally, Treyarch had plans on making the Thunder Gun to be on 5. And that's because Keenan Toten had been planned to be DLC 4 in World at War. And so this meant that 5 was going to be the only launch map. A DLC 4 was going to compete with the launch of Modern Warfare 2, however, so Activision didn't allow it. Treyarch then ported Kino to Black Ops 1, made it the launch map, and pushed 5 to a bonus map. So do you know what that means? The Thunder Gun was originally Five's weapon, and Kino stole it. Same with Nova Crawlers. Anything that you might have thought was an innovation from Kino, small that they were, actually really just kind of got ported over from Five to make the maps balance. So yeah, Kino added nothing. And the only things that it's really known for were stolen ideas from Five. Okay, so. At this point, you probably hate me, you probably disagree with me, and you probably think my view on Kino is tainted, and that I'm a World at War fanboy. But I actually have a very great appreciation for Kino der Toten, despite my personal distaste for it. Kino der Toten has aged poorly. Its gameplay mainly has to stand on nostalgia due to its simple nature. Storyline-wise, nothing really happens, and it's just not set in an interesting location. If we break it down to its purest form, it's a simplified Doris clone. It's got a teleporter that you have to link, which accesses Pack-a-Punch. It's got dog rounds. It's got the OG four characters, four-ish perks. I mean, they're identical. And so where I'm going with this is to say, that that is actually a really good thing. I might even say that that's the best thing that has ever happened to zombies. See, here's the thing. Kinder der Toten is nothing special anymore, but it did exactly what it needed to do at the time of its launch. See, Doris was an instant hit, a classic and fan favorite. But Doris took hold of the community that had already formed, but the problem was that it was on DLC. See, Doris nailed the format, 
but it wasn't in the right packaging. That is to say, as a DLC, it didn't have enough eyes on it. Say, if even 5% of people who bought World at War purchased DLC 3, that's still not a huge audience. It certainly was a fierce one, but Doris just didn't have the position to expand zombies all that much. Kino did. Kino der Toten took the exact same winning formula, okay? We're talking simple route to power, simple pack a punch, boss rounds, cool wonder weapon, awesome Easter egg song, traps, neat characters, cool perks, all of those World at War ingredients, right? It took all that, put it in a different output, and put eyes of the greater community onto zombies. See, if 5% of World at War owners play Doris, I would argue that probably 95% of Black Ops 1 owners played Kino. Simply put, that's because it was the game on disc. There were no gimmicks or V-Buck purchases necessary. You just bought Black Ops 1 and you had Kino. So while Kino to Toten may not be the most fun map to play anymore, it was crucial for zombies. And whether you dislike it or love it, you have to respect it. Kino der Toten made zombies the true third game mode of Call of Duty. It consolidated zombies and made it accessible to the larger Call of Duty community. And just as a fun thought experiment, imagine that Kino had been DLC 4 for World at War, and then imagine if 5 had been the immediately available game on launch. Ouch. Now, I love 5, and we'll talk about that next week, but that would have been rough. 5 is challenging, complex, and really just truly crazy. Imagine that being the way people were first introduced to zombies. It would have been a nightmare. 5 wasn't bad if you had played everything before it, but going into 5 blind as your first ever zombies map would just not have had the same impact. See, Kino was the safe play, but the smart play. The stage is wide open and introduced the general community to training and really just the overall aspects of zombies. You even had this big safe cushion gun to save you when you screwed up. It was really the perfect place for a new generation of gamers to start zombies. So I'll end with this. There's a quote that someone said about David Gilmore, who is the incredibly skilled guitar player of the band Pink Floyd. And I kind of equate it to Keener der Toten. It goes something like this. It takes a really skilled guitar player to be able to lay down some amazing and complex licks over a song, but it takes a master guitar player to be able to back off with complexity for the sake of the song overall. That is to say, in creative situations, sometimes you need to back off with complexity and your own advancement for the sake of the overall project. That is to say, in creative situations, sometimes you need to back off complexity for the sake of the overall project. And that is Keynote or Toten to a T. While it doesn't serve as a flagship of Treyarch's overall skill, and it didn't add anything new to zombies, it introduced an entire generation to the series in an easily digestible way. And while I see the community very polarized about Kino, either hating it or loving it, I encourage you to step back and appreciate it for what it was. Coming back to the Doris comparison, World of War Zombies was the tiny campfire which took flame via the sparks of Doris. And while Kino der Toten was never a spark itself, it was the gentle breeze which blew the fire out of its pit and into the adjacent dry forest next to it. Kino der Toten was the map that spread this uncontrollable wildfire, and it was about to burn hot for more than half a decade. <laughs>